What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today I have something that I wouldn't classify as a treat, but we're going to talk a little bit about safety and welding around zinc. A uh, viewer requested this and I thought it would be a great time to do it. So let's get into it. Shockingly enough, out of the 300 plus videos I have and, I don't know, a handful of safety videos, I never talked about welding around zinc alloys and how to deal with it. And someone had suggested a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, to do a video on this. And I realized, yeah, I should have, A, done one already, and B, I definitely need to do it. Because if you weld on stuff, the probability of you running into something zinc coated is 100% you will at some point in your welding career or your hobby have to weld on something zinc coated. So that's what we're going to be covering. Now, what am I talking about? What I have in front of us here are a couple different bolts, washers, a little tool, little wrench here. All of these have zinc, zinc chromate, or any number of finishes to prevent rust that they're dipped in and typically like in zinc it's a hot dip process so the material or liquid is very hot and they dip bolts and wrenches and stuff in it and when they come out they are completely coated with a extremely durable rust preventative coating that's great for keeping your stuff around for a long time especially up here in the northern states where everything rusts out but it's terrible because guess what when you weld on stuff like this it atomizes this material and both the dust vapor, so particulate and actual uh, vapor from this, uh, will get into your lungs and it will make you immensely sick. Now, don't take my word for it. Uh, I'll put up a <laughs> WebMD of what the effects are, but long story short, zinc fume fever is incredibly bad. I've never had it personally. I've come close probably before I even knew about zinc, uh, what it was and what it did. But I have talked with people who have had zinc fume fever and they say it is no picnic. It is just massively, you're sick and you're not having fun. You're puking and it lasts anywhere between 24 and 48 hours. So you don't want to do that, especially chronically over time. You're going to damage your lungs and probably your brain too. So let's get up close and look at this stuff a little bit better. Looking at this wrench, now this is too heavy to be aluminum, but it does look like aluminum. Zinc can come in a silver form like this. This is very common on nuts and bolts, cheaper bolts. When you get to the grade eights, they're generally coated like this guy. But both of these likely contain high levels of zinc. Now, if it's aluminum, obviously it's not going to be coated with anything. It might be anodized, but steel, very commonly zinc coated. Same thing like with this bolt, all these washers, this guy. Now, where you have to be careful is you might go to the store and buy something like this steel tube. And if you look at it, see how it has a bit of a silver sheen? Now, this is not coated as far as I can tell. It's a little bit suspicious that it hasn't really rusted much, despite sitting on the floor of the tin shed forever now. But you can get tube like this that's a little bit more silver, so maybe a little bit less shiny than this, that is also zinc coated. And the hardware stores sell this, and you might mistakenly grab this for a project and start welding on it, and then, of course, expose yourself to zinc fumes and get sick from it. It can be really tough to tell with some materials. That's why it's always best, and this doesn't have a UPC, check the UPC in the store if you're buying your stuff at, like, your Menards, your Home Depot, your Lowe's, and oftentimes it'll say weldable steel on the sticker. And if your metal supplier that you're buying from you know, they should obviously know the difference between zinc and just plain steel. Always specify plain steel. When it comes to welding this, the question always is, can you weld on this stuff? The answer is absolutely yes, you can. Uh, the next question is, how do you do it safely? Well, there's a multitude of ways to do this. And some are right, some are wrong. And I'm going to give you the gamut of them. That way we're all kind of on the same page and you can use your own brain and your own due diligence to figure out what will work for you. 
One way I have heard, and I haven't personally done it, is to use muriatic acid and soak these parts in it, and apparently it will react with the zinc and eat the zinc away and give you more or less a bare bolt. I personally don't believe in doing that because, well, one, you're now mixing even more chemicals, and if you're in your garage or your basement or your grandma's attic, that's not good for anyone else around there. And if you did it outside, whatever, but now you could have residual acids left on whatever you're dipping to weld. I just flat out don't like that idea, so I don't do that. The most common way that I deal with this issue, say I needed to weld a piece of galvanized tube like this, I would generally speaking take a flap disc and grind a section that's going to get welded down the clean metal, weld it. One problem you have with that, well actually there's two problems. The first one being that area will now rust that you cleaned off. Not generally a huge deal, but that is a issue. The second issue is the grinding dust off of that will also make you sick. So that is not good. Uh, if you've ever ground on anything galvanized, it tends to have a weird, I don't know if it's a rotten egg scent, but it's very distinct and you know immediately that you're welding on galvanized or grinding on it because it just has that odd smell. So for the most part, depending on what it is that I'm doing, I generally do very little prep work with it uh, for obviously non-structural stuff like this tube. And I will flux core or stick weld it and prep is at a minimum because I'll be honest with you guys, this stuff welds terribly if you don't clean it. And even if you clean it, it generally doesn't weld that good either. So wasting a lot of time super prepping this stuff is kind of not really in your best interest. Now, it's very common that I weld a nut like this onto something. That case, I will, again, buff it to clean material, put it on something, and then TIG weld it or stick weld it, whatever, and that works just fine. I'll generally hit it with spray paint when I'm done just to help prevent rust, but that's an option as well. When it comes to the quality of welds that you're going to make on stuff, like I said, the welds are going to come out pretty poor. And I'll put up some example pictures of stuff that I made recently at work, which kind of sparked the interest in doing this video. So let's look at those now. So I got tasked with welding on those fins, more or less, on that galvanized square tube. These things get pounded into the ground and then a stop sign or any kind of signage ends up going inside of it and it basically bolts to it. Well, they normally just pound the square tube in the ground and over time the square tube will move around and it's easy to pull them out. So the theory was putting the fins on it will prevent it from being able to move in the dirt. When you see the back side of that weld there, you can see all that white powder. That stuff more or less gets into the air and into your lungs and poisons you. Sounds fun, doesn't it? But this case, it's white. Oftentimes you'll see a very distinct yellowish color to it. Uh, like I'm talking neon yellow. If you see that, white powder, sometimes hints of blue, any of that, that's a great sign that the base material is treated with something and that you should be wearing a respirator and not breathe that. Even the dust from grinding, any of that will all get into your lungs and then it's going to make you sick. Telltale signs besides the color of the soot that's around the area you weld. Oftentimes if you TIG weld it, you'll see a blue arc. I'm not exactly sure. It's probably the zinc reacting with the high intensity, the super high heat of the electric arc. But you occasionally, even with stick welding and flux core, will see a blue arc. So any indication of odd arc color is a great indication that you're welding on something that's uh, coated and not good for you health-wise. Now granted, I used Harbor Freight's uh, flux core wire, which in previous testing I've shown seems to have a lot of spatter, but you can expect to have pretty poor welds when you don't grind off the zinc coating. And this spatter right here all cleaned off with a wire wheel on a grinder, so that goes a long way. 
but you're going to get weld porosity here and there with this. It's just unavoidable. Now, realistically, I could have ground down all 20 or so of these that I ended up making to clean base material and then ground the mill scale off the fins. But it would have added, I don't know, three, four hours worth of work for very little gained. I mean, this stuff is going in the ground and is going to last however long it does and more prep work just to get a little bit better weld. Honestly, this is a case of it's not worth it. Oftentimes with flux core and even stick, it can be hard to tell what the difference is between, you know, your zinc oxides and, and contaminants and the soot just from the normal welding. And this is a great example, like how much of that is surface material that's burning off and how much is just a standard flux core. Well, again, a telltale sign is look in the area behind what you welded or so on the flip side of it. And the holes that you see there, and it didn't turn out too well, but there's like white fibers all over everything. Again, you don't want to see that. Don't breathe it. Wear a respirator. Here's a really good shot of all of that white powder. It kind of is like a spider silk, like a web or something. It's kind of a weird substance. And when you weld on those zinc chromate bolts and nuts, that produces more yellow soot than what you see here. The shiny silver stuff produces stuff like you see here. And here's a perfect example of ending porosity and even mid-bead porosity. You're going to have this. And if you ground that weld down, I'm sure that there's internal weld porosity as well. And that's why, like structurally speaking, if you have something that needs to be strong, you're going to have to grind it. You can't leave that surface on there and try and weld it. All right, let's move on. So as you found out, it is possible to weld on galvanized and zinc coated materials and you got to be smart. And I cannot stress enough that you need a mask, a P100 that's rated for metal fume like this one by Klein Tools, it says protection from dust, metal fumes and oil mist. You need a mask like this if you're going to even think about welding on zinc or any kind of plated bolts or material. Now, even if you're welding outside with a breeze, still wear the mask. If you're indoors, like in your garage, wear the mask and put a fan to blow all that material out. I'm not a huge fan of MIG welding plated stuff. I find the ideal process, believe it or not, is standard flux core gasless wire. That works the best, in my opinion. You're still going to get porosity in the welds like you saw in the pictures. That's going to be part of life. But you will make plenty strong welds on most material like this and thinner. Now, for nuts, welding nuts on something, probably not the best idea to use flux core. It tends to be a little bit more brittle for the self-shielded, but it is still an option. The other option is 60-10, 60-11. Those are great rods to be welding on stuff like that and very common in the fence industry for guys to do 60-11 on fencing and posts and all of that because it works so good welding straight over zinc. And I will beat a dead horse. I cannot stress enough, wear a mask. One of the things you're going to find out about welding and contaminants in general, not just in the welding world, is that the accumulation of them over time is extremely detrimental to your health and to your lungs. Very commonly, a small exposure is going to do no lasting damage, but when you breathe it routinely for hours a week, over time it's going to cause damage to your lungs, possibly to your heart, to your liver, etc. And a lot of heavy metals that are out there that you might be exposed to via welding will get into your body and your body has no means to remove them. AKA we as humans have not been exposed to them long enough for our bodies to come up with a defense mechanism to filter that contaminant out. So your heavier metals like tungsten with TIG, for example, when you get that in your blood, it's going to take a very long time to remove it. Same thing with mercury. Our bodies and other animals' bodies do not process heavy metals very well. We're not foundries per se. So anyways, hopefully you learned something today and you're a little bit smarter when working around trash like this. And absolutely, you can weld it. Be smart and be safe about it. Until next time.